Hi, it's Leslie Meredith with Break Bulk Events and Media. I'm here in Houston at Break Bulk Americas. We've just finished our first session, standing room only, uh, given by the what we call PEG Procurement Executives Group. And I have the moderator of that session here with me, Randy Dentinger from Kiwet. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's been uh, a few years since the Procurement Executive Group has gotten to present here to Break Bulk, but we are very pleased to uh, be back. And uh, as you said, standing room only, and it was uh, a lot of great questions and interaction. So we're glad to be back. Yeah, fantastic. Can you tell our audience first, for those who do not know, what is PEG? So the Procurement Executive Group for the Engineering and Construction Industry is an organization that has been around now for 25 years. We've had our 25th anniversary this year. And it really started with the uh, large EPCs based here in North America, you know, wanting to get their heads of procurement together to, to really further and improve the industry and procurement and supply chain and kind of understand what each other does, bounce ideas off each other, and, and, and really work on overall improvement uh, in things in, in the supply chain world. And we've been doing that now for 25 years, and we're up to uh, 16 of the largest EPCs that participate in the procurement leaders. And it's uh, going quite well. Well, that is great. And I think it's a wonderful uh, example of collaboration between what we think of well, that are obviously competitors. That, that's true. And, you know, there's been a lot of consolidation in the industry as we uh, kind of went over in our presentation. You know, when, when that first e &R list came out in 1965 showing the top 400 contractors uh, in the industry... Right. Well, only 38 of those contractors are left. So a lot of the people in the PEG, they've worked for different companies, different EPCs. Many of the companies have merged together. And yeah, there is very good collaboration uh, with, within the group. And, and our goals are really the same thing, trying to be the best we can be in procurement and supply chain. Excellent. So back to your presentation, give us a couple of the high points that you'd like people to understand. So some of the high points from, from my presentation, uh, you know, I didn't get into too many specifics about new projects, but I did talk about demand drivers. What's going to fuel these new projects in the future? And many of them are industrial type of projects driven by the growth in the global uh, middle class. And a lot of them could be in food and beverage and energy, you know, the global middle class is growing at a pace that's unprecedented and the global middle class for the first time ever is now the majority of the population and it's going to continue to grow at a very very rapid rate anywhere from 140 to 170 million people joining the middle class every year and that's an unprecedented rate and the epcs need to be aware of those changes and how it's going to impact projects in the future absolutely um during the presentation you mentioned uh, something as simple as people being more concerned about eating healthy food. Um, how does that affect the project world? A lot of changes in, in, in the, the way people eat and what people eat. You know, here in, in North America, you know, usually there's, there's families where everyone's working. So there's a need for more prepared foods, quick foods, frozen foods. There's also a health trend. More and more people wanting to get uh, the, the, you know, the healthy foods and know what's in their foods. Uh, we're also seeing uh, growth in even the brewing industry with uh, the malt and barley and, and those type of projects. So there's changing appetites. But the, the other part of my presentation was this, this global growth in the middle class, especially in Asia, China and, and India, where 20 and 29 percent of the growth in the global middle class is coming from. They're changing their diet. You know, they're adding more and more protein to their diet. So instead of eating a rice-based diet, they're adding chicken, they're adding pork, they're adding beef. And, of course, when you do that, it takes so much more energy and so much more grain and water to produce those type of foods. And, and that's really going to have a huge impact in, in, in what happens with projects in the future. And I even talked a little bit about the innovation and the trend towards uh, clean meat or lab grown meat and you know right now today uh, maybe maybe you've heard of it you can grow uh, beef and chicken in a lab by taking cells from an animal and, and you can nourish those cells and, and grow it 
Now, unfortunately, to have a real small, maybe one or two ounce steak may cost you $50. So the technology is not there. But in the future, instead of having these enormous uh, animal plants that cause a lot of waste and energy and other environmental concerns, imagine if we could grow all of our protein in a laboratory, clean and, and have an endless supply. Absolutely. So does that mean you'll be building more laboratories? It could be more laboratories. It certainly can be more more uh, man manufacturing for those type of facilities. And, and uh, you know, if the technology doesn't come along quick enough, we'll be building more, you know, f chicken facilities and, and uh, beef, you know, processing plants and that type of thing. Because that that growth in the protein demand globally is a real thing and it's going to have a huge impact uh, in, in projects. All right, that is interesting. Now, as we look ahead at you as, as part of PEG, how are we feeling about the next, say, 2020, 2021, next couple of years for project potential? We feel pretty good about it, uh, especially since we're focused here in, in North America, the USA, Canada, and Mexico. And we're seeing a lot of these markets um, doing well at the same time, whether it's the, the um, power market with the growth here in renewables in particular and power delivery and transmission and distribution projects. Oil and gas is booming right now. We've got the, you know, the shale gas and LNG export terminals being built and proposed and designed uh, everywhere. Uh, which is which is huge opportunities and then transportation infrastructure another huge opportunity for all the EPCs that, that operate in that market and uh, of course if Congress gets their infrastructure bill put together in a trillion dollars it'll just be that much better but we also see water water treatment plants huge needs there addressing the flooding concerns and other issues with water management everywhere you look and so all the markets are doing well at the same time, which is uh, kind of un unprecedented in our industry. And good news for everyone here at Breakbulk. Very good news for everyone here at Breakbulk. Yeah, but they must be aware of these tra the trends and these changes in market types. Because if, you know, you've got a business built on supplying coal plants and nuclear plants, well, you probably need to shift and, and get on board with these new markets. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate you and your group sharing all of this information with the people here at Break Bulk so that they can make better informed decisions. You're very welcome, and we hope to be back again soon. Great. Thank you.